Hi, everybody. M my name is Adam Zielinski. I work for the Foundation for, Pol for Polish Science. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I'll, my idea of, of our presentation is as follows. I will uh, draw a gloomy and depressing uh, picture of our in Poland and then hand over mic to, to my colleagues who will hopefully uh, give us some, some hope and present uh, promising practices. So uh, uh, the, the, the first slide that you see is a way of, of uh, uh, saying that the starting point in case of Poland was slightly different uh, because we are usually catching up with, with the rest and ideas which, uh, which are already known somewhere else are still new in Poland. So instead of explaining the complicated history, we decided to uh, present this kind of uh, poster and here you can see the faces of some of our most active hub members. Uh, so my, my, my opening remarks would be as follows. So uh, I think that the idea of our is still far from being acknowledged in Poland. There are some areas gathered under the roof of our RI which are uh, relatively developed like science education, but there are others which are uh, neglected. This is the case of ethics, for instance. And uh, it is perhaps uh, specific for Poland that uh, civil society organization has taken the lead. Public agencies are lagging behind, as always. Uh, business remains indifferent, I would say. And in case of research community, I think we can talk about some sort of skeptical look at RI. And when we were gathering promising practices last year, so uh, uh, we, we managed to, to identify a few of them. And what is interesting is that most of them concerned either science education or public engagement. Uh, the second thing is that most of those practices were relatively new, meaning one, two, three years old. And uh, the, the first thing is, I think it's interesting in the context of our toolkit, or the toolkit that we will uh, try to build soon, is that uh, there are cases of, of uh, practices that were invented somewhere else and successfully implemented in Poland with some sort of adoption to, to local uh, conditions. And the last thing I wanted to say now is that the main conclusion from the workshop that we had in Warsaw was that uh, we should go for what I call a tactical disaggregation of our right concept. And I will return to this closer to the end. And now I would like to ask my colleague Viktor Gajewski from the Copernicus Science Center to present the first of our promising practices. Viktor, what is yours? <laughs> So um, I'd like you to show you a little um, experimental dialogue event we did before the term RRI was even existing. Uh, we did it amidst the um, debate on genetically modified organisms in Poland. And um, we think it's promising, even if it's kind of basic tool, because we want to adapt it to be a tool to bring the concept of RRI to a wider public, to the lay public. and. Um, while making this experiment, we made a few assumptions. First one is probably you will agree that people are not stupid. Um, and they know a lot, especially about the topics that, that concern them as GMOs. Maybe they don't know facts, scientific facts that are scientifically true if there is, is something like that. But they have their opinion and they can easily reach the information that go together with their viewpoint and opinion. Basically, um, those opinions are formed uh, depending on the affinity you have to certain groups. If you like scientists, if you trust scientists, you will value more, more the information that are scientifically valid or seem so. If you prefer um, Greenpeace movement, you will trust their information. Therefore, opinions equal facts. In public debate, I don't make the division because uh, in people's perception, em emotional perception, they are as important as each other. So um, therefore, uh, we decided that pumping more information into people is pointless and trying to convince them is, is, is definitely hard work. So instead, let's move a step back and try to talk, make them talk with, um, with 
with you'll see, so you'll see who. So uh, we introduced a format. It, it's an um, adapted format of a science cafe, you all know. Science cafes are, are great, but uh, we noticed that in Poland usually there's an um, expert who speaks in an informal setting of a cafe or a club, and, and then there's a set of questions and then everybody goes home. We wanted more. Therefore, we decided to reverse the role of experts and public. In a way, the setting up you, you, you will recognize is a world cafe, cafe setting of tables. So there's big tables and there's people and there's experts. But this time, the experts ask questions. We worked with different scientists and um, also with a journalist and a, and a lawyer that are dealing with GMOs. And we told them to prepare a few questions that they don't know answers for. For example, um, what are your expect expectations as a, a biologist uh, for these um, GMO researchers in Poland? Who would you like, uh, uh, who you think should inform you about GMOs, asks the, uh, the, the press communicator. Or um, is tra GMO transplant crossing a line? What do you think, as, um, uh, as, as a doctor? So we pre pre prepared those questions with them, and then we in introduced public in a obviously informal cafe setting. It's in our science center, it's not very informal, but we had cookies and cafe. Uh, and so, and then, expert comes to the table, asks the question and leaves. And people have to prepare the answer, basic on their opinions, facts, knowledge. Then the expert comes back and then the discussion starts. Um, discussion, engaged conversation, which was uh, the, 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 the aim of this, of this experiment. Um, what did we do? Did we, did we change anybody's opinion on GMOs? I, I suppose not, and I didn't want to do that uh, at the time, um, because I wanted to do something much more important on a basic level. I was trying to help people build relations to different stakeholders um, that have a say in GMOs, and to introduce those stakeholders, to sh show a spectrum of people who are dealing with the issue professionally, and also to show the public that they can speak up and they have something interesting to say and we should all talk and listen to each other. And um, hopefully we'll develop it into something more, much more complicated to involve even more stakeholders and even more perspectives from this new RRI thing we're talking about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Victor. <laughs> now let us move on quickly to uh, another practice. This is Dr. Martin Greenberg, a colleague of mine, who is not only an excellent researcher, but also a co-founder of so-called Citizens of Academia, social movement within the research community. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we started the movement three years ago, and you can see the, a few facts that uh, made us angry. We just thought, you know, why 0.3% of GDP is invested in Poland to to, uh, to science if the innovation is, is the words, a keyword of every government. So how, can, how do they want to do it with no scientist involvement and with such a low uh, level of investment into science? And of course other problems where, where hu humanities uh, PhD students don't even get a dime in order to, to, to push the studies, they have to just to, to, to earn the money in, in some other ways. The, the, the so-called innovativeness rate is quite low, it's the third from down, uh, third worst in, in the EU. Very limited mobility of, of Polish scientists and very low success rate in applying for, for EU money. Two minutes, too bad. <laughs> uh, so, so we we thought, uh, since there is no system and presidents are looking for ways to uh, presidents of universities are looking for ways to understand why government wants science in in Poland, we thought it would be nice to uh, to try to cope with this. So you will not see the film. <laughs> But uh, finally, what I want to say is our actions. Uh, we now ending up with the, with the Pact for Science is an idea which we in, into which we invited uh, other organizations in Poland in order to build 
a group of to to combine problems and ways to solve them in science, both combining education and uh, business, which means it's a triangle in which scientific community is very important. We, consul we consulted it with different communities, different groups, and on the 29th, we will present it to the Minister of, of Science and, Educa and Higher Education and to other, I hope, stakeholders. And, uh, but this, the, the politics stuff that we're doing, we're trying to push somehow the problem of system. But we are also doing some gross uh, uh, actions, as you can see. Uh, I will not talk about all of them since there is no time, but one of the most important ones is the EDU action, which you can see in green. It's an idea to join uh, teachers, teachers from universities with teachers from schools, in order to learn about openness, open access, uh, and many other aspects. Uh, for example, how to work in an in, in environment where you have different players. But the most important thing is that they build together project, uh, citizen science projects that will, will be applied at schools, at their own schools, not somewhere else. So it, it goes into specific needs or ideas that arise from meetings, but they are used in, in this specific, specific surrounding. And of course, as you can see, open science, gender and family balance, legal acts review are, are, are very important points in here. I should uh, stress in here that we are around 40 people, no more. And we, we are trying to do all this stuff uh, and uh, it's hard. If you want to know more technical issues, I'm, I'm, I would be happy to, to help if you want to, uh, to do it in your country.